Hi and welcome back to OpenLCA Tutorials. It's been a while since our last video, but I am happy to announce we'll be posting videos every week starting from now, so keep your eye out for that. My name is Sarah Winter and today I'm going to go through parameters with you. So what are parameters good for? You can use them for sensitivity analysis, you can use them if you put in preliminary data and you want to change the data at the end of the study, you can put different impact value, input values in and then create different versions of the lifestyle, sort of to create different scenarios. And overall, parameters uh, reduce the likelihood of calculation errors. So let's look at parameters just by looking at an, an example in OpenLCA. I'm going to open up my latest version, which is the 1.4.1 Beta 5. The original, the last official version of OpenLCA is available on the website. But we do have the beta version available at SourceForge. I'll put the links down below. Since there's no installer for the beta version, I'm just going to open up my extracted file right here in my library. It's already open, so here it is. Oh, here's some old stuff that I was working on. Alright. Let's start out by creating a new process. New process. So for this example, I thought we could look at a hypothetic transport process for steel. So we're going to transport steel and name our process transported steel. Create a new product flow. Number of items and finish. So here is our new process. We just have to fill it with content. So we have steel, um, stainless steel, see where it is, steel, the RER is referring to Europe, so I'm going to take that one today, and we want to transport it. Let's say we're going to transport freight transport, truck transport, land, other go medium sized truck okay and I want to also look at what happens if I if I also use transport with a train transport land rail freight train freight train in Germany because that's where I am okay now let's go to the amount in normal case, I'm going to set this to tons because we're working with ton kilometers for the unit for the transport. So let's put this on tons. Normally, you can always add the amount that you're transporting or anything right directly in the amount window. So you have 20 tons. Let's say I'm going to transport 500 kilometers. I can put that right in like that. If you want to see the value, the actual value that's calculated, you can always click here on the right hand side. It's just double click and switch it to see what your calculated value is. So, but what I'm going to do today is select parameters. So to add a parameter, also again right here on the right hand side, let's add a parameter for the weight, for the truck, and for the train. Let's say our weight in our first scenario is 20 tons. We're going to be using a truck to transport it 500 kilometers or maybe 500 kilometers with the train. In the description box you can write a bit about what your what your name is referring to. Sometimes if you only use a single letter you might not know later, so you can describe the weight of steel in this case, and so on and so forth. So if I go back to the inputs, I can type in for the steel my weight. For the transportation I have my weight, weight times the distance of the truck in this case, and here the weight times the distance parameter train, and I can see the values and that's what I come up with. So this is the first level. Another possibility here on processes to, is to add dependent parameters. So let's say I want a weight is combining two different loads, so I have my weight total Let's add one more. Now we're on this level. Let's say weight B. So my formula for weight total is going to be my first weight plus weight B. 
and that value is going to be 21. So I've got the 1 here and the 20. So that's how dependent parameters work. You can take parameters that you've already set and use them to define further parameters. Let's leave that one for now and save the process. And now we'll take a look at how that works on the product system level. So let's go to general information and create a product system. Add a lot of processes. Okay, so here's the product system that we just made. Now we can also on this level use our parameters that we set. Let me open up here. We can see the parameters that we used in this process. So let's open up train, open up track, and wait. So if I set this value to be 600, for example, we want to go 600 kilometers to the train, but we're not going to use the truck at all for our 20 tons. Then when I calculate the product system here, it's going to use these parameters, not the ones I set at the process system level, or the process level, sorry. So they can override each other. And maybe if I want to go 100 kilometers with the truck, 500 kilometers with the train, but this time I'm going with 31 tons, set it here go to the general information and calculate it. That's about it on the product system level. The next level would be the project level, which is also quite fun. So let's make a new project and we're going to compare transport scenarios. So this is what the project level looks like on the newest version of OpenLCA. So I want to look at different variants. Let's add a few. So this is our um, product system that we set, um, that we created. So let's add a few different variants of this product system. It's basically case 1, case 2, case 3. And I want to play with my parameters. So let's open up our parameters for this process. Train, truck, and wait. And let's say for the first situation, I'm going to travel 1,000 kilometers with the train. I'm not going to drive with the truck at all, and I have my 28 tons. In the second case, I'm going to drive 500 kilometers with the train, then it's going to be loaded on the truck, and then it's going, then the weight is still 28 tons. Let's say I want to compare that to a situation where I'm going, not going with the truck, going the whole section of the train. And I can add even more cases if I wanted to. Let's add another one. There are four. In this case, I'm going to go in 10,000 kilometers with the train, nothing with the truck, and my 20 tons, and so on and so forth. So you can create different variants, different cases that you want to compare. And then when you calculate this um, project, either here or in Kona Port, then it's going to give you values for the impact assessment method that you chose, or just the inventory values, or and the inventory values rather, um, for all of these different situations that you've typed in. Okay, so these are, that was on the, the different levels. It, you can also set global parameters that are available on every level. So if you go to File and click on Preferences, you can hit Global Parameters in here, a couple that I already looked at. So you can add parameters to this section, say weight BB, no spaces. There we go. Say the weight in this case is 18, weight BC, and so on and so forth. You can just change everything. And these global parameters are going to be visible on the process, product system, projects level and you can use them to override any others. Okay, um, what else do we want to look at? The formula interpreter. If you are not sure on whether your formulas are working or you're getting errors and don't know why, you can go to the formula interpreter. Okay, so you can use the formula editor to check out the formulas that you've used.
and see if there are any errors in them. For example, you just type in the expression that you have. So if I have the expression log 108, bracket closed, it'll give me the value. If I type in the expression incorrectly without closing the bracket, for example, it's going to let me know that that's where the error is. So if you are getting errors, you can go here into the formula interpreter and try to figure out what they are. And you can also look at your variables. For example, if I set the variable a, a is equal to 10, that'll, and I say then I want to know 15 times a, 150. So any variables that you, you've set in your parameters, you can set the variables here and see if the formulas are working and see if your expressions are correct. I think that's everything that I wanted to show you for parameters today. I did put a bit more information in the uh, description box below, so if you're interested, check that out. There's also a link to a document showing all of the formulas and operations that you can use in OpenLCA. Yeah, that's about it. So to keep up with what we're doing, um, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn, and check out the website, openlca.org. If you have a request for a video, Feel free to write a comment below or get a hold of me directly and we'll see what we can do. Thanks a bunch and see you next week.